Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to share with you several things that I learned from my story. If you haven't already watched my previous video on my history with eating disorders, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss a video. I release a new video every Wednesday. My name is Kevin and I help entrepreneurs and professionals break bad eating habits and develop new ones. So let's get to it. The first thing that I learned is that intention is not the same as implementation. When I was 20 years old, my goal was to become the healthiest version of myself. I wanted to change my diet, eat healthier, be fit, be lean, make fitness my number one priority in life. But that's not what happened. Instead, I developed multiple eating disorders that didn't end for 10 years. I almost ruined my life. I almost uh, ruined my health for sure. I recovered it, fortunately but things didn't go as i had expected and that's because i developed some really bad ideas about what health and fitness was it became my obsession it became my number one priority and i neglected everything else in my life like my friends and my relationships and my career and all of my other skills so i ended up becoming the least healthy version of myself which is kind of ironic when you consider my intentions my point is if you intend to be healthy then you actually have to execute in a way that makes you healthy the second thing that i learned is that believing that next time is going to be different is always a lie it's something that i told myself for many years when i was trying to overcome my eating disorders and when i was trying to stop binge eating and overeating i told myself that probably a thousand times because it was convenient it made me feel good about myself it gave me the hope and the promise that tomorrow would be different that i could do whatever the hell i wanted today because tomorrow was going to be a brand new day and i was going to be on day one and i was going to be a little angel from then on and i think it's that belief that today doesn't matter and that i can just take action tomorrow and everything will be okay that's a really crippling belief and that's why i kept doing what i was doing for so long that's why it took me so long to quit because i had that voice in my head every day saying tomorrow 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 the problem is tomorrow turned into next week which turned into next month which turned into next year which turned into next decade that recovery never came future self never came i always thought that my future version of myself would be different would be very enlightened would never make bad choices would be able to tolerate high levels of hunger and pain but that was never true that's just something that i told myself to alleviate the emotional pain of my bad choices it gave me license to sin today so that i could be noble tomorrow the third thing that i learned is that i didn't need a ton of willpower let's face it willpower is finite we like to think that we have more than we really have we like to think that we're gonna have more willpower in the future uh, than we do now but really that's just another excuse to misbehave today and not take action it's another excuse to procrastinate and put off the hard work that actually needs to be done now having said that i should say that some sacrifice was involved when i recovered i couldn't just eat whatever i wanted i couldn't eat whenever i wanted sometimes i had to say no when i wanted to say yes and vice versa but i didn't need to squeeze my fists and just exert a ton of willpower to break my bad eating habits and finally restore my health that was a myth for so long i thought i just needed to try harder and every time i failed and went back to day one i thought next time will be different because then i'll have more willpower then i will be stronger then i will be able to resist temptation i also didn't need to do anything drastic i didn't need to remove an entire food group i didn't need to do keto i didn't need to go vegan i didn't need to do a 10-day fast i didn't need to drink water and juice for 60 days i know people have watched that movie fat sick and nearly dead where i think he drinks like kale juice for 60 days or whatever that's great i commend him i'm glad he has that amount of determination and fortitude i never did most people don't so i don't think that's a sustainable solution the fortunate thing is i don't need that and neither do you you don't need to do a drastic 60 day juice cleanse just to restore your health and to break bad eating habits that's the good news you do have to be persistent good habits are hard to break sometimes it's simple but it's not always easy and it's not always something that occurs overnight 
but just remember that you don't need to resort to drastic measures to break a bad habit and restore your health. The fourth thing that I learned is that no one food was the problem. For so long, I thought I had to stop eating some particular food. Maybe it was dairy, maybe it was grains, maybe it was sugar, whatever. And I, I would read some doctor who preached that starches were really healthy. And then I would read another doctor who said that starches were bad. And then I would read, watch another video about some doctor who said that fructose was the poison of our time. And then I would read other research and other blogs that said that fructose actually had a leaning effect. I was getting all of these contradictory messages, but I was missing the point. The point was my behavior was never the food. I always had to correct my behavior. But for so long, I focused on particular food groups and I thought if I just abstain from this one food group, then everything will be okay. Or if I just don't eat candy bars or energy bars or peanut butter and I just keep that out of my house then everything will be fine. No one food was the problem, the behavior was the problem. And the reason I was making bad choices is because I had bad thoughts in my head and I had a faulty belief structure. Like I said earlier in this video, I kept thinking that tomorrow would be different and that I could just do whatever I wanted today because tomorrow I would start the process of recovery and I would make better choices tomorrow. But like I said, that was really just an excuse to misbehave and it just made me feel better about my bad decision. If you're making bad food choices, just keep this in mind. Your behavior is where you need the focus. That's what you need to fix before you start modifying your diet and before you start cutting out entire food groups. No one food can make you binge everybody's a little different but i always found something else to overeat i always found some other demon for some people cheese is the most addictive thing uh, potato chips i hear can be pretty addictive personally i never once bench on either of them i don't particularly care for potato chips i always like stuff that had high amounts of sugar and a particular texture namely like something that was chewy like cookies or um, a cliff bar. I also liked stuff that was really creamy, like peanut butter and peanut butter plus energy bars was always the best. My point is everybody has different predilections and it's really hard to cut out everything that you're overeating. If it were just one food, maybe that's one thing, but overeating and binge eating isn't like smoking cigarettes. Smoking cigarettes is binary. You either smoke them or you don't, but eating is much harder because you have to eat something, right? You can only go a month or two at most without any kind of food. Eventually my list was so long that I just couldn't eat anything and I would just overeat whatever was available, even stuff that was quote unquote healthy. Once I started to focus on my behavior and I stopped focusing on the particular food, that's when I really started to notice results and that's when I started to recover. The fifth thing that I learned is that I was the only one who could make better decisions for myself. I didn't have anybody in my life who truly understood what I was going through. At the time, this is not too long ago, but I just didn't know too many people in my personal life or too many people online who had had the same struggles that I did. If I had, I probably would have recovered a lot sooner if I had somebody to coach me and guide me through the process and help me reprogram my thoughts and focus on those disabling beliefs. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. I felt all alone and that's probably why it took me so long to recover and break these bad habits. But even with a coach, I still had to be the one that made those better decisions. Nobody can control my hands. Nobody can control my thoughts. They can facilitate it and they can guide me in the right direction. But ultimately, I'm a free agent and I have to choose what I do. I have to choose what I eat. I have to choose to go to the gas station and, and buy all that junk food. I have to choose to go to the grocery store at three in the morning. Nobody can make better decisions for me and nobody can make better decisions for you. The good thing about free will is that we can choose what we wanna do with our lives. The flip side is that we can also choose to make really destructive choices like overeating or binge eating or starving or over exercising whatever it is so free choice is a great thing but it can also be abused and since you're still here i want to give you a bonus another thing that i learned is 
the most disabling belief. The most disabling belief you can have about any bad behavior is that today doesn't matter and tomorrow is different. I kind of touched on this earlier in the video, but I think it's worth reiterating. We have this tendency as humans to procrastinate. We love to procrastinate. There's always some reason to wait. Things aren't perfect. Uh, my environment isn't perfect. My circumstances aren't perfect. I'm not happy enough, whatever. There's never gonna be a good or convenient time to break a bad habit. There's never gonna be a good time to start eating healthy. There's never be, never gonna be a good time to start losing weight and start making the decisions that you need to make. But for 10 years, I kept telling myself that today doesn't matter and tomorrow will be different. Psychologists call this delay discounting. What you need to do is sacrifice today so that you can have a better future. That's just how winners think, that's how investors think, and that's how rich people think, and that's how healthy, lean people think. People who discount the future for today end up having much worse lives. Research has shown this, and people who can't resist instant gratification do very poorly in life. I hope you found this video helpful. If you're struggling to break bad habits and implement new ones, I have some free resources. KevinBerciaga.com, and I have a free web class, and I will show you five action steps you can make today to break those bad eating habits and establish new ones so you can become the healthiest and most productive version of yourself. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.